In this video, we are actually gonna dive into the GLP files. We're gonna do sequential animation on the computer, put it on cool LED stuff, make it work. It's gonna work this time, promise. What's up, I'm Chris, you're back at Flyride, and this is part two of programming the ghost sequencers. So this is the little ghost sequencer that I made last video, and I said I was gonna be working with it potted, and it wasn't potted yet, and then I ended the video. This was the abomination that we worked with last video. The point was that I wanted to show how we could program these 12 LEDs that are half white, half amber to do a cool switchback sequential animation. And when I opened up the file, it turned out that that file was actually misnamed. It was a taillight file, which means it completely has different steps and different programming in it. I got the right file. I also got a lot of really cool stuff from Kyle over at Ghost, so we're gonna go over that. I get asked pretty often as well about the WRX taillights that have these crazy little reverse panels and these really cool C bars. And what we're gonna do today is actually show you how I'm gonna wire those things up exactly like we did that funky little strip. So without further ado, let's just dive right in. Now, unfortunately, I did have to seal up these lights before I got a chance to make any sort of changes to the GLP file for the lightning bolts, but I will show you a couple cool things that they do, and then we'll just dive into the other cool stuff. This is one of my favorite features of the ghost modules, that they can do switchback sequential. So I have something set up to turn off this white LED when I turn on the sequential turn signal, but what you'll see is at first, the turn signal won't finish all the way. You'll see this bulb, which is the factory bulb flashing, and then this one will go about halfway up. After I hit about 10 times, you'll see that the whole thing actually has completely illuminated and the ghost module itself has self-timing adjusted to the rate that I'm tapping that turn signal. Okay, so now it's adjusted. It's only the first time that it's actually connected to power and ground that it's gonna look at how often those turn signal pulses are coming in and self-adjust to that speed. So if I go right back to turn signal now, it's gonna finish all the way every time and go back. Super, super smart stuff. If you don't understand how techy cool that is, I mean, oh well, that sucks that you don't think it's cool. All right, let's keep going. All right, other cool features. This thing has a very amazing show mode. So this will be on a remote control, but for right now it's on the bench. That is show mode number one. We also have show mode number two. So when we dive into these GLP files in just a sec, you're gonna be able to see where you can select the animation for show mode one, show mode two, and make adjustments to it, which we didn't do on this, but it's cool because it came out super sick. And now let's worry about some other stuff. Next thing that we're gonna do is actually, I'll show you a little preview of this. We need to get in here and modify these things right now. So unlike our ugly little made, little switchback sequential strip that I made last video, these ones are already super dope, good to go, and we can connect those ribbon wire cables directly to this. So I'm gonna do that. These are shipping off to a customer, but I wanted him to have a really cool wire harness and have the ghost modules flashed specifically for this. It's a fly ride exclusive thing that we made a while back, and I just wanna make sure that they're flashed and they do the cool stuff before we ship it off, so his install will be easy. <laughs> This particular little C bar, it has all the wires typically come straight out the back right here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna just hook up the ribbon cable to all terminate right there, which means that if I want my first five channels or four channels to go right there, I actually have to make this, cut this longer, taking into account that everything's gonna have to go up to there first, then come into the back of the tail light. Next thing, I know this is only a 14 channel part and we've got two different things that we're gonna be wiring up. So I'm trying to figure out how the heck do I do this the right way? <laughs> I don't even know. totally changed up the programming from the switchback sequential like we were doing on that little test strip and we just flashed it with the hex file for those WRX taillights and demoed those. So that change where I went from the ghost module 
to the ribbon cable directly to the circuit board. I think it was cleaner, but now I'm in this weird situation where I'm like, damn, I have to hook up the reverse panel as well to that. I don't know if it's gonna work the way that I want it to, to keep it super clean and easy. So here's the issue. We've got this ghost module. It's got this nice little ribbon cable going to it and the ribbon cable goes directly to the circuit board. Now, we've also got these. Those have to go to, at least nine of these wires have to go to that reverse panel. I don't think it's gonna work well to solder these wires directly to that other circuit board, this one right here, because now we're not gonna be able to run them through the holes to keep all the wiring clean and nice. So what I'll do is instead I will run nine individual wires to the back side of this guy and then when it's mounted those wires can connect to those wires and then boom we're done easy kind of easy but this is actually seven wires i didn't realize that it's going to be a seven channel sequential board so here's my seven individual wires i'm going to strip and solder those things directly to this panel and then what i actually want to do when i look at the programming i don't like it this is something that was done a while back and the end result was cool, but we only had one show mode. And then the second show mode was designated for reverse. Now in one of my old videos, the one I'll just link up right there, I just show you how to take a relay and use it to turn a positive signal into a negative signal. So I know that I can do that because these things are powered by a negative signal. So I think I'm gonna do that. That'll actually open up the ability to add a second show mode to this setup and no one's ever done that before. So I mean, hey, let's just, let's just do it, right? And bye out. Good to go. Now the question becomes which wires on here are going to be needed to power that up. So I'm just going to guess we're going to count off seven. And by the way, the only reason that we switched over to WRX is because I can modify the GLP file and you can see it and appreciate it on something a lot cooler than just that little cheesy strip that we started with. I honestly, looking at this now, I don't even know which the right order is. There? Mer? Yeah, let's call that the next channel. Showing you the process is documentation. Document, don't create. Right, Gary? Right, Gary? Gary V? I know you're watching this because you want to modify your WRX, right? Yeah, probably not. Another thing to note. This is something a lot of people have said that they wanted. I appreciate that they want it. That's cool. But it ain't going to be me that builds it. Not going to do it. Not going to do it. Wouldn't be prudent. Okay, that's cool. Excited. Okay. Power, ground, signal, got him. Show mode. Ooh, buddy. Ooh, buddy. Ooh, buddy. All right, let's see everything that happens. This was my beef with the show mode. You're watching it for so long before it does other cool stuff. <sighs> Boring, and it does this cool flash thing that it should have done off the bat. See, look at that. That's what it should have started with. Come on, man. Attention. That's what this is all about. Attention. Okay. So we see what it does. Let's get in and change the GLP file. Finally. Okay. So this is inside the actual Ghost Sequence Designer. And I'm just poking around on a couple different tabs. That's the show mode tab. And you can see all those little lines of code are actually LEDs that are being told to turn on and off. And you scroll down, I mean, there's hundreds of lines of code there. So what I wanted to do on this was I wanted to find the ones that were the very beginning part of the animation, meaning step one all the way up through 250 something looks like. So I highlighted all those first steps and then I'm gonna delete them and all that's going to do is remove them from that animation, but keep everything else intact, such as those really cool flashing sequences. Now at this point, I scroll down, just check out a couple things. Don't really know what I'm doing actually, but I figure that's about all I need to do. I'm going to compile it and it's going to ask me to rename the file. So I'm just going to change the date, say, okay, version five, save that hex file. And then, <laughs> oh, man. So the GLP is compiling right now, and I don't know how long it's supposed to take, but probably not this long. Seems like kind of hung up, which would suck because I'm just trying to make a video 
showing you how I'm learning this and I'm learning it so slow and stupidly. And this is like the third day. I thought we were gonna do daily videos, clearly not. The compiling continues. All right, we're going on day three with this whole thing, but good news, I talked to Kyle last night. He set me straight on what I had done wrong. It wasn't at all anything about the server or something not uploading correctly when I was trying to turn that GLP into a hex file. I had too many steps in the animation. So what I did, I went through, I eliminated all of the steps for the running light and just to free up memory basically, or space, I don't even know what the right way to say that is. But then I tried to compile and it worked. So as I'm looking at you right now, I think I should just put this on top of a little screen recording session. Anyway, here we go. I wanna show you what that ended up doing and how it looks on here. It's freaking cool. And then we're gonna make some more changes and I'll show that and that's that's why this video is so long. Okay, let's go. Stuff I'm learning as I'm going right now. I found out that one of the steps in here is just, it doesn't make any sense to me. It's when you step on the brake, it doesn't immediately turn on the brake. Like that kind of seems dangerous. So this is a file that I've had since February of last year. I've never even poked around it until right now. Take a look at what it does when you step on the brake. Watch when I connect these two wires and then when the light actually comes on. Tiny little delay. You just got rear-ended. <laughs> I don't know if that's how hardcore it is, but either way, I like the fact that there's the blinking and all that stuff, but it should be immediate. So watch this. If I tap it really quick, no brake. That's sketchy. That freaks me out a little bit. So I made a change and I looked and it was one line that had to be deleted from the GLP file. I'll show you what that looks like on the computer, re-upload it. But before I switch over to that screen, watch how fast you go from talking about a change that I need to make to actually plugging it into the computer, zapping a new file onto it and testing it again. So I'm gonna quickly disconnect the ghost, move it over to the computer here. And that's why those little connections are so great. So I'm plugging it in, loading the new file that I've already made. So we don't have to wait for me to do that. And now I'm gonna program it. All right. Test it. So now let's see if I do that little quick test. Immediately. So even if you just barely tap the brake, it's gonna show it. So check it out. I actually made a bunch of extra footage for this video that it's just, it didn't quite fit. It didn't get into the programming of the GLP files. I just, I wanna bring as much value as I can in each video and I want them to make sense. So if I put it at the end now, it ain't gonna do any good for anybody. These things are awesome. I love them. I think working with parts like this, most people don't even realize that this stuff exists and I wanna to continue to bring it, talk about the brands that we work with, the different products that they have, as well as work with you to make new products. This is gonna be interesting because all of a sudden we're gonna have some of the part of the channel that wants to see crazy stuff, other part it's just gonna be way over their head and they're not interested. So we are gonna bring you off of YouTube Yes, off of YouTube. That's gonna be for guys that really wanna dive more into the sequential side of this stuff, even just the entry level side. I'm gonna bring you into my online course on lightsman.com. It's also gonna be lightingcourse.com. I don't know, there's so much work to do. You know I'm busy, you know I'm trying to make it happen, but we have some really cool things ahead, including I need you as part of the community to build all these files together with me, make them available for everybody. So it's gonna be open source, open community, and for the guys that just wanna be part of that circle, cool, all I ask is that you contribute. For the guys that really wanna dive deep, learn how to do this, learn how to make some money for their shop, their business, whatever, you guys are gonna be able to buy the different individual parts of the course as well as the whole $500 course. So not pitching you on that right now. That's not what this is about. I will pitch you. I will do sales. I love sales and I'm good at it and it's fun. So if I believe in something, I have zero problem talking about the price tag attached to it. And that will be in future videos. Everybody else, you probably didn't get this far in the video anyway, but we are gonna start talking about how people can get involved with custom lighting to make themselves some money, some extra bucks, 500 bucks a month, whatever it might be, it'll be up to them. I have a lot of information about it 
And man, I shot some really cool video this week all about that with one of the people that is gonna be involved in that series. I'm also gonna be looking for a lot of other people to get involved in this series. So if you've watched this far, you've also noticed that some ads have popped up in the videos over the last couple that I've posted. That is because we are actually trying to fund this channel. So there's gonna be a lot of extra ways that you can help out and do that, or you can just sit through and click past those ads, whatever. It all makes a difference and it's gonna allow me to do a lot more of this stuff. So without giving you a giant talking head video like this right now, I figured I'd pack all the value into the front, explain some stuff in the back, and man, moving forward, it's just gonna be lots of what you want. So I need to know, are the custom sequential builds, the really nerdy computer stuff, do you want me to go further with that? Do you want me to just leave it alone and keep it off over on Lightsman and lightningcourse.com or should I pack more of it into the channel? Let me know, tell me what you think. If you did watch this far and you're not subscribed to the channel, man, just smash that subscribe button because you gotta be here. There's no reason that you would get this far into a video and not wanna see more of it, right? I mean, unless I'm doing a terrible job. Anyway, like the video if you did get this far and you are subscribed. And like always guys, share this stuff out to somebody that you think it would help. I'd like to see more of you guys getting involved, engaging in the content. So tell me what you think we should do. Comment below. I will see you guys on the next one and I'll show you how to pop finally. But that's gonna be a weird video. Should I put that? I don't know. I'm so confused, later.